So good afternoon and um, welcome to the Health Careers Live conference um, 2020. I hope you've been having a great conference already. Um, my name is Tony Young. I'm a consultant surgeon in the NHS. I'm a urologist down in South End in Essex. I'm also the Associate Medical Director for the Mid and South Essex Hospital Group. I'm the Chair of Medical Innovation at the Medical School at Anglia Ruskin University, but I'm also the National Clinical Lead for Innovation at NHS England and NHS Improvement. And I'm really delighted to be here this afternoon with you to come and talk to you about something that I'm really passionate about, which is the future of our healthcare workforce and trying to encourage and inspire people to come and join us in what I think has been you know, one of the most exciting things I could have uh, done in my career, certainly. And actually, working in the National Health Service, it's such an inspiring and rewarding thing. Although at the moment, as I'm sure many of you are aware, it's also a really, it's a tough time generally for everyone, and particularly so in healthcare. So I thought I'd tell you a few of the things about what we're doing at the moment at uh, NHS England. And, and, and set the scene for the future on the art of the possible. Um, and I'm sure you'll have heard quite a lot of things from different speakers and around different opportunities and different careers. So this should be very slightly different, I'm hoping. So, as I explained, although I'm still a frontline clinician and a, and a medical leader within my own um, sort of hospital organization in Essex, I suppose one of the joys of my life has been about six years ago, I started as the National Clinical Director for Innovation for the Health Service in England. And in this job, the idea was to try and get the latest, greatest things taken up across the National Health Service so patients could get more rapid access to the latest innovations. Um, I was also responsible for helping to grow the life science economy in the UK. So getting those ideas out of our labs and into businesses to help them um, generate products and services that will make a difference to people's healthcare, but also help generate policy and advise all sorts of people across our government, arm's length bodies, industry and foreign governments that come and see the NHS. So a kind of a really broad role across the centre. And some of the exciting things I, I get to do, are, so I meet about a thousand companies a year from across the world who come and tell us about their latest, greatest ideas and what's going on. And um, then, uh, uh, so I get to see things uh, before you'll actually um, see them either in the medical literature or uh, even find them on, uh, you know, through a search engine or on social media or such things. So that, ability to horizon scan means um uh, uh you know i feel sometimes i suppose like a, a, a the little uh, kid i used to be that woke up in a toy shop one day seeing all these amazing things but one of the things we weren't doing in the nhs was supporting people who wanted to develop entrepreneurial ideas so if you wanted to be a leader in healthcare or a teacher or a researcher we encouraged you to take forward careers in that um, line. But if you wanted to build a startup or be an entrepreneur, we didn't have any formal support for you until a few years ago. And it was around four years ago now that we launched something called the NHS Clinical Entrepreneur Program. And this was the first time we brought something together where you could gain commercial skills, knowledge and experience to help you take whatever your idea was for transforming healthcare and really make that happen. So we gave people a commercial coach and mentor, less than full-time training if you were in training, a whole range of networking and educational events, industry days, connections into customers and funding, and a whole range of other support on helping you prepare your business plan and all the sorts of things you would need to make your idea happen. A long story short, in we've just collated our year four data and we've had over 220 startups founded in our first four years. Um, they've raised over 250 million pounds between them, created over 1300 jobs, and around 140 clinicians who'd had to leave the NHS to pursue their entrepreneurial dreams and ideas have come back to work in it. So we've turned a brain drain into a brain gain. 
But it's not just doctors, although they are the, the people who were our guinea pigs. We, we tested this new program on them in year one in junior doctors, um, and, it, and it worked. But it's open now to everyone working in the NHS, so nurses, dentists, allied health practitioners, clinical scientists, pharmacists, and even uh, managerial and admin staff. Anyone delivering clinical services for the NHS and can apply. We've actually just closed our latest round of admissions and we had over 700 initial applications to that. But rather than me um, tell you more um, uh, facts and figures and details, I thought I'd give you a couple of stories of two of our entrepreneurs. So this um, picture you can see here is how, I mean, how super exciting is this? Um, uh, uh, you know, I get to give a talk on innovation. We're the Formula One Red Bull um, racing car in the background. So the reason that is there is because of this thing here, which is the world's um, cheapest portable ventilator. So when the pandemic hit six, eight months ago now, and we discovered in about March time that actually the NHS may have a shortfall in the number of ventilators that we needed for intensive care to support our most vulnerable patients with their greatest need. So the government launched a ventilator challenge. And at the time we had uh, just over 500 frontline clinicians on our program at that point. And, you know, one of them was a junior doctor, an orthopedic registrar, who'd been developing this low-cost portable ventilator you can see there. Um, and he was inspired by his work in South Africa when he'd been out in, in a, a low-cost setting and a trauma setting to say, actually, it would be really useful if we could provide a ventilator for in this environment. Now, intensive care ventilators could cost £100,000 um, to take forward. So young Alastair Darwood um, pitched to the government and 15 separate um, ideas were taken forward over the period of around four to six weeks time, uh, four to six weeks in March and April this year. And so he was embedded in um, the Formula One teams uh, in Milton Keynes. He was in uh, Renault and Red Bull, as you can see there behind me. And um, they spent, I think, close to 10 million pounds over that time and you know they were ready for about 5,000 of these devices to roll off the manufacturing lines but then within a week of that um, uh, happening the numbers changed and we realized we'd managed to bend the curve on the infection rate and they came down so these weren't ever required and thank goodness they weren't required but what has actually happened and as Alistair has gone on to refine these prototypes now and he's now exploring the utility of what I think is probably the world's lowest cost, most portable ventilator for use in emerging economies across Africa and in other countries too. So something really great has come out of that from a junior doctor. And the next example I wanted to give you was this one. So this is the, you can see them there, this is the NHS drone squadron, the rainbow squadron as it's called. There's Chris and Hamid, two of our clinical entrepreneurs. They're medical students, actually, at the Royal London Hospital. Um, and that they're standing by Rainbow One, which is one of our first drones in the National Health Service. And this is the helipad of Broomfield Hospital. And these are uh, two guys. They're only, I think, 22 now. Um, and they, ever since school days, have been um, uh, passionate and committed and driven about understanding um, how you could bring Based technology and things like drones into healthcare to make a difference. And when you look at what's been going on with COVID, you know, getting swabs to the right place at the right time, getting personal protective equipment to people could be a really important step forward. So just recently, a few weekends ago now, you may have seen their story in the national media and press. Um, because they were awarded, I think it was 1.5 million pounds of funding from the UK Space Agency to utilize this drone technology um, using um, uh, 4G um, to help uh, uh, coordinate the drones. And the first flights are due to play, take place soon between Basildon Hospital and Essex and Broomfield Hospital, delivering things like PPE and COVID type swabs to help us in that logistic. Um, you know, challenge we face around how can you get the right equipment to the right place in the right time and get your swabs to the labs promptly to be delivered. So quite inspiring that 
to medical students could come on our program. We've teamed them up with one of our mentors and they're now leading the world. This is one of the most advanced examples of drone technology in healthcare anywhere on the planet. And it's come out of two medical students on the NHS Clinical Entrepreneur Program. So there we are, those are just two examples of perhaps over 500 I could have given you of amazing frontline clinicians. Um, we've had um, inspiring nurses that have come along um, with amazing ideas for addressing real challenges they faced around um, providing new clinical service developments. And those haven't necessarily been the next big Silicon Valley startup. You don't have to go and raise a million or 10 million pounds to take your idea forward. You may want to be more of an entrepreneur within the NHS, someone who wants to develop the commercial skill, knowledge and experience to try and transform patient care. And so nurses like Bernadette Porter from Queen Square with her neuro response idea around couriering um, uh, uh, urine in specimens. So when people think they have a urine infection, they can get their specimen curried to the lab and they can also get antibiotics sent directly to them without this patient having to leave their home. But we've had clinical scientists looking at um, heart transplants. We've had pharmacists developing new um, uh, drug prescription and uh, repeat prescription platforms. We've from augmented and virtual uh, reality through to uh, new medical applications and medications, in fact. So a whole range of different ideas that have come from empowering the front line of the National Health Service to not just identify the problems, but also give them the skills, knowledge and experience to help them address those challenges that we face in healthcare. So if you want to find out anything more about the Clinical Entrepreneur Program, if you type into a search engine of your choice, NHS Clinical Entrepreneur, you will see some fantastic examples and case stories on the NHS England website about a range of different ideas and activities that have gone forward. Um, and so don't think that just a career in healthcare has to be limited to clinical service delivery, although that is really important. I am still a consultant surgeon on the front line in Southend, still seeing people in clinic and operating on them and on call. And I still really enjoy that. It, making that difference to the individual who's in front of you is so important and it feels so rewarding. But actually for me and for a number of clinicians I know, they wanted to take that step further and do something entrepreneurial. So we've now put that resource in place for people. So I'd encourage you to take a look at the NHS England um, uh, website. And if you have any questions, you can either uh, message me on Twitter or connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd be uh, happy to answer uh, any questions you might have. And I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks very much.